Okay. okay, we're ready to get started, we hope. Okay, so the age of the iPad, and I've got these two images here. One is a Roman lady with her wax tablet. I think we'll close the door here so we don't disturb people. And I'm sure many of you who did Latin at school or whatever know that uh, in Roman times, uh, school children had little tablets. And whatever the master said, presumably they wrote that down. And so to me, the Roman tablet represents you know, a tablet which really can only receive information. Or you can write yourself, but you can't share the information. You can't participate in much. Whereas with the iPad, and this has certainly been my experience, all of a sudden you are connected. You are connected to a huge community, almost a limitless community. And uh, we'll go to the next page here. And uh, I happen to like learning languages. So in the last 10 years, I have been working on four languages. Uh, Russian, Portuguese, Cantonese, and Korean. The Korean is not so hot. But the other three I manage quite comfortably, listen to the radio, don't have much trouble. So, you are connected to the world, and if your interests are languages, that's fine. If there's something else, you can find communities of people who have similar interests. Now, I had, uh, I was on a, I guess a, a, a forum on the internet arguing with someone, and this person was doom and gloom and you know, the world is in terrible shape and, you know, and people are dying and they're sick and this, that, and the other. And I remembered that there was a book written by someone called The Rational Optimist. I couldn't remember the name of the book. So I simply went to, because I have an, a Kindle application on my iPod, I went to Kindle, which takes me to Amazon, I just put Optimist. And up came this book, The Rational Optimist by Matt Ridley. And yes, that's the book I want. And I bought it for $7. So I'm sitting in my sofa at home. I say, I want to read this book because it's relevant to this discussion that I'm having. Uh, the Optimist, something or other Optimist, I Google, or not I Google, I go to Amazon on my iPad. I see the book, I buy it, and I start reading it. I mean... Sorry, I mean, uh, to me, that's absolutely extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. It's not the first time I've done it. I had, if, if uh, you know, I want to, I often get into arguments with people about education. I can look up, what are people saying about education? Here's a slew of books. Some of them are very cheap, 99 cents. Buy it, read it. It's not a good book. Throw it away, you know, nothing lost. So, to me, it's, it's extraordinary. Now, this book, The Rational Optimist, is a very interesting book. And... The point that he makes is that evolution of idea, the evolution of ideas as opposed to our evolution of, you know, physiologically, right? The evolution of ideas takes place when we have a competition of different ideas, an exchange of ideas, not the same ideas, but different. As in, in trade, for example, we don't exchange wine for wine. We exchange, in the, they did that in economics at school, it's, it's the Portuguese wine for the British wool, or whatever it was. It's this whole idea of comparative advantage. And so the more exchange of ideas we have, and the more competition of ideas we have, the better ideas come forward, the poor ideas don't survive, and this is all cumulative, and we accumulate this tremendous collective knowledge. I'm simplifying his book. I'm giving you his book in 30 seconds here. But with this, we can customize to different needs. It's an anarchic, bottom-up development. But the net result is that our collective knowledge grows, and the bigger the community, and the greater the amount of exchange, and the greater the exchange of ideas, the faster we develop. And so really, this, this uh, development is accelerating. So if we look at, just in terms of information technology, I think the first PC, I can remember playing this funny game uh, on a PC in 1980, you know, and I think the internet really didn't get going until 1995. I mean, it's only been around for 15 years. Uh, Wikipedia, which is everybody's first place to look up anything, uh, only came on in 2001. Now, you can say that it's not always accurate, but there's always something there. And you can skip Wikipedia, but it is there. And if we have an argument, how many people live there or whatever, it's there. And it's free. And it's only been around since 2001. 
if we look at the speed with which we can access these different systems, I mean, I can remember standing in Japan selling lumber, connecting on a public telephone, taking forever, you know, so that I can send information back and forth in the rain, whatever. And now we have, here I am. I am standing here and I'm connected. And that's all that happened in, the, in, in a very, very short space of time. And so the more people are connected, the more the ideas are being developed, and the faster these things are, are accelerating. Uh, if we look at the, you know, we used to deal with mainframe computers, desktop, top, laptop, iPad, iPhone, everything's getting smaller. Uh, even the content is merging now, you know, uh, radio, uh, internet, telephone, Skype, communicate, it's all merging into one. It's extraordinary. You'll be able to, to dial into whatever, like, I can sit at home on my Apple, and I can go to a radio station, and I can look up, Classical music and up, opens up, you know, a hundred radio stations. And I want to, there's Radio Chopin, there's Radio Mozart, there's Baroque, there's whatever I want. I pick one that happens to be a radio station out of Geneva. Uh, I have in my house, I got a little repeater station for my, for my um, network, and I have speakers on there. And so just before I sit down for breakfast on a Sunday morning, I like Baroque music with my breakfast. So, before we sit down, I just pop in a radio station, we listen to Baroque music while we have breakfast. It's extraordinary. If I wanted to listen to Portuguese fados, I could find them. So, uh, so all of this stuff is happening. And uh, just to get back to uh, our friend, the rational optimist, <coughs> in this whole attitude of doom and gloom, he points out, in fact, that since 1970, the population of the world has doubled. Now, for some people, they may not think that's nice. For, for those people who wouldn't otherwise be alive, it's not a bad deal, right? I mean, there's seven billion people alive. Maybe there would only have been one billion without all of this progress. So for the six billion who have a chance to live, that's kind of positive. Uh, cereal production has doubled. Despite all the gloom and doom, poverty has declined. Health has improved. Prices for everything have declined in terms of how many hours or days of work are required to purchase something. The only exception is education. And in the United States, the price, the cost of K-12, kindergarten, grade 12 education, in constant dollars, has gone up 350% since the 1960s. 350% in constant dollars. And the results are, at best, the same. I mean, there is a statistic, it's not directly, but it's largely related to education. The incarceration rate in the United States has gone up 700% since the 1960s. So, I believe... What about housing? Housing Housing is marginally, you know, housing is the cost of building a house or the cost of land? Buying a house. Okay, well, you have to look at the price of land. Now, the price of land, again, I'm not an, an expert on this, but it tends to rise fairly constantly. The cost of building a house, he mentions in his book, is somewhat less than it was, let's say, 100 years ago. But it's not yeah. as dramatically less as a number of other things, including food and so forth and so on. So, I have the belief that the iPad is, is part of, and when I talk about the age of the iPad, I think, I think the iPad is, is only the beginning. You know, there will be other tablets. But the idea that many, many people are going to be connected in a mobile, convenient way to these vast communities where people are exchanging information, ideas, languages, you name it, that that's going to finally bring some of these uh, cost savings to education. Because if we look at a classroom, 